This is a brushless motor, and this is an even bigger brushless motor. You may also notice it's made out of plastic, and that's because this thing is almost entirely 3D printed. This motor was designed by Christoph Lamer back in 2017. From his testing, this is about a 600 watt motor, which may not seem like a ton for the size, but considering it's 3D printed, I think it's actually pretty impressive. Christoph gets pretty detailed instructions on which infill and which materials to use for each part, but I kind of went rogue and just printed out a PLA Plus because that's what I had on hand. But I would definitely recommend following his instructions. To print the core of this motor, I use this magnetic PLA from Protopasta. This stuff is pretty expensive, but using magnetic PLA will give the motor a bit more torque because the metal particles in the plastic will make the magnetic field generated by the winding stronger. The first step of assembling is winding the core. This takes a while, but it isn't too bad once you get the hang of it. Christoph wrote up a really good Instructables article showing exactly how to wind the motor and has some really good tips in there. If you're planning on potentially building this motor, I would definitely recommend reading through this Instructables article first. Christoph says in the article that he sells the files for $10, but they're actually listed on a make -see for about $45, uh, so I'm not sure what's up with that. But overall, it is a pretty cool project. Once the core of the motor had been wound, the rest of the parts could be assembled and the bearings and shafts could be fitted. The magnets in this motor are actually arranged in what's called a Halbach configuration. Now, magnetic fields are essentially black magic to me. But, to the best of my knowledge, the Halbacher array kind of reorients the magnetic field and focuses it more inwards towards the stator. So if you're like me and you do projects or have hobbies where you learn new things, then you may want to check out the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. It's an online learning community with thousands of classes on wide-ranging topics from computer science to creative writing. So if you've been trying to learn things like PCB design, programming, IoT development, or almost any skill, then Skillshare is genuinely a really good place to start. In preparation for this video, I spent a lot of time exploring the platform and watching classes. I think my favorite was a class called The Foundations of Microcontrollers. It was taught by a guy named Ash K. Gill, and it goes in depth on how the inner workings of microcontrollers operate. This is something I did not learn in school, and I didn't really pick up from just using them. You can take these classes as well, and if you're in the first thousand people to use the link in the description below, you'll get your first month of the membership free. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and now back to the motor stuff. As you may have noticed, there's a lot of bearings and other hardware involved in this motor, and a complete list of this can be found in the Instructables article that I referred to before, and it'll be linked in the description below. I obviously can't distribute the files for this project because it's a you know product that Kristoff is selling, but I will put a link in the description below to where you can buy the files or just check out the motor a little bit more. To my surprise, once I finally assembled this thing and wired it up, it actually started spinning. I really wanted to test the power of this thing, and that's where this 16-inch prop comes in. So I used my load cell, and I printed an adapter so the motor could be mounted to it. I also needed a way to attach the propeller to the motor, so I decided to spend way too much time modeling this spinner cone and figuring out how to put this cool swirl on it. So I used my resin printer to print it out and then attached everything for a test. I think it's definitely fair to say that this spinner was way over the top and not needed, but I'm super happy with how it looks and it also worked great, so I was really excited to see it in action. The first test I did was using a 4 cell battery. I was actually really impressed with this test. The thrust numbers aren't anything crazy, but the motor was quiet and smooth.
At its peak, the motor generated about 1.7 kilograms of thrust. This is about 3.8 pounds for all of us living in the US of A. I wanted to push this motor a little bit further though, so I'm going to redo the same test using a 6 cell battery. Alright, running on a 6 cell. Here comes chaos. Alright, so now here's that same test, but from a slightly different and slightly more terrifying angle. Even this close-up angle doesn't really capture how crazy and kind of sketchy this thing is to be around. I did some quick math and each one of those magnets in there is experiencing 2,000 g's of acceleration. This means there's about 50 pounds of force on each one trying to rip it through the plastic housing. Looking at the thrust data for this test shows that the motor made 3 kilograms of thrust. That's over 6.5 pounds. This motor also seems like it has more power left in it. The guys over at Flight Test managed to run the motor at 12s. So maybe I'll try that in the future, or let me know if you guys have any other ideas for what I could do with this motor. Until then, thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.